Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Casual KO. We're ready for some uh, UFC 308. This should be pretty sick, actually. I just watched, too, the uh, Ilya Taporia, Max Holloway interview that ESPN did where they were kind of split screen. And I, I forget the guy's name that was in the middle of him. It was kind of dumb, but... I mean, Ilya is confident, man. So I'm excited. I like that one. I, I thought them throwing Bible verses back and forth at each other was hilarious. I didn't hear any Bible verses. Maybe I missed it. But yeah, dude, like to me, it was just kind of, I don't know. It seemed like I, I'd, I'd prefer these in-person interviews a lot more. Um, if they were both in the same room, I think it'd be kind of cooler. But yeah, Max seemed like super disinterested and it was late yeah, as but hell. It's better than not having it at all. I mean, it's hard to get someone from Hawaii and someone from spain together for that yeah but it's the ufc they got they got the money to do it but um yeah it was it was whatever it's just one of those things where i mean to me man Ilya seems so confident and um max holloway is just kind of he, he seems indifferent all the time and that's kind of his personality that chill hawaiian thing but it's gonna be an interesting fight man there's a lot of good fights on the card we should probably talk a little bit about the last card i'm wearing my glasses today because i lost the bet with Rob Font versus Kyler Phillips. And Kyler Phillips looked like shit, man. He really did. Rob Font. I think good. all the favorites look like shit. I mean, I don't know how you did on that card. I had a horrible card, lost on Pineda. <laughs> I had I a bad card. On, I lost on Pineda. I lost on the No Distance in Johnson versus Sumaderji. I lost on my PFL picks on AJ McKee. I did hit on Francis, but my other leg lost. And I took a shot on Jake Hadley. Yeah, that was a bad pick in hindsight, but it seemed like oh. the right one. I had a horrible card, too. Um, it would have been great if um, I had my biggest bet of the night was uh, submission round four or five for Hernandez. And that missed uh, barely. You know, I, Very I, close. I don't understand why he didn't go for the sub. It seemed like he was dead set on getting a knockout because he had so many opportunities and he just wanted the knockout. So I should have seen that coming. Hindsight's 2020, but yeah, I was, uh, I was pretty pissed after that night and then, um, had a decent day betting some NFL the next day. So, you know, it all works out in the end. We're uh, excited for this card coming up. So let's get into it here. Um, scroll down to that first fight. And, uh, I think, this I I don't know if this is gonna be the legit matchups like the orders here, um because I don't know why Chris Barnett and Kennedy is this far up the prelims. I thought that was gonna be first initially, but as Tapology has here, first fight of the night is Bruno Silva versus Ishmael Nerdaev. Um, this guy was in the UFC before, right? So it's kind of interesting they're bringing him back after a two and two run, it's taking on Bruno Silva, who's looked like shit lately, but. I mean, what do you think about this first matchup of the night? I have my first matchup as Ebo Aslan. Did that fight get canceled or something, you think? Uh, no, it's the second one. Ah, so my, my source just has him backwards. Yeah, this was a tough one, you know. Bruno Silva's against the wall. And to be honest, I, I it's a tough one to take. I think Bruno's the bigger guy. I think that Ishmael's the one that's truly a welterweight here in my opinion i think bruno might be a little bit too big for him so i'm gonna go against my gut here i think bruno can win a decision here but I'm super not confident it's hard to bet against a guy who's only won one fight in his last out of his last five so and ismail's much younger hard not to go with him by decision i just think he's gonna be a little bit too small for the division yeah, and then if Bruno starts the wrestling, that could get interesting as well. I don't know if you'd want to wrestle this guy too much, but, um, you know, I mean, he th this guy seems pretty good all around, just not uh, at a high level. So I I'm not going to lie. I don't know a ton about this dude. I'm just going to go with Nerdiev, Um, and I'm probably going to take him by decision. I don't think that he could finish Bruno. He definitely does seem smaller than Bruno does, but, I mean, the knockouts I don't think are coming as often. There's a 10% drop in knockouts across all weight classes. And uh, there's different theories as to why. There's the USADA stuff. There's the glove stuff. Um, I think that it's just a close fight either way. And it's a, it's a fairly low-level matchup. So, yeah, give me Nerdiev. And uh, I'll take him by decision. Not confident at all either. But I do have some confident spots on this card. Second one of the night here, Ibo Aslan versus 
Is this a Brazilian? Yeah, it is. Rafael Cerqueira we'll go with. Um, this one, man, you know, a lot of people are high on Aslan here on Tapology, and I don't get that because his UFC win is against the Pleasure Man. The Pleasure Man, you know? This dude, the Pleasure Man, is one of the worst to ever do it in the UFC, to be honest. Like, just objectively, he is bad. So... Ibo Aslan, you know, a lot of power, a lot of a lot of aggression coming forward, and and he's got a, he's going to be dangerous in that first three minutes, um, but I think even at the end of the first round he starts fading. Uh, what was this one of the contender series? Paulo Hanato. Uh, I do remember this fight. It wasn't super impressive, even though it was a quick knockout. Just seemed like big dudes throwing hands. Tercali sucks. Um. I know nothing about this this uh this other dude that he's fighting here in um Rafael, sorry, Rafael, Cerquera. Nothing about him, but I'm gonna go with him because he's gotta be more well rounded than Ebo Aslan is. So I don't know if you've done tape. Um I'll just go um I'll go round three submission just to be a little different. I, I tend to think that this goes over, but Ebo is tough. I think he's gonna empty the tank in round one. And um, you could see that that comeback for uh, Sakiera here in round two or three. But I'll go three just to make it spicy. What do you think about this? Yeah, I agree with you. This is a tough one. And as the odds say, it's even odds for a reason. And the reason why I don't really want action on this is that I don't trust Raphael's um, strength of schedule. I don't trust – he hasn't fought anyone in my opinion. And – at least Ebo Islan has a win in the UFC. And that's the only reason why he's a favorite here, in my opinion. So it's hard to go against a younger guy here with the better competition. It's just, I, I like what I've seen from the tape from Rafael. He's a little bit cleaner on the feet. He's low volume. And don't get me wrong, Ebo is going to be winning this fight early. But the longer the fight goes, I think Rafael is going to, have the power advantage i think he's the bigger guy and I, I think he can get him out of there late i think he can put enough damage on him over the over the first two rounds to get him out of there in the third so i'm gonna go rafael round three finish you go sub or knockout i'm gonna go knockout and the thing is too he was who was he supposed to fight he was supposed to fight francisco mazio and they canceled that fight to to bring him up so I already know the UFC has given him a little bit more credit than some other guys that they, they're they looking at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting here. Um, two kind of lower-level matchups, but then we get into another interesting one here because Leal is, an, is a... I mean, this is his debuting performance here. He's fighting Renat Fakhrdinov, Carlos Leal, big PFL guy, um, fought, on, uh, fought in Bellator once, has three fights in LFA as well, and... Um, this is another guy I'm not I'm not sold on his competition level because I think very lowly of the PFL competition level. We kind of saw that with Francis Ngannou, and obviously Francis Ngannou is very good for the UFC level, but the PFL was talking this big Brazilian dude up. Um, I remember that you were saying that you had some friends that were thinking this dude could beat Francis. I didn't think it was going to come that fast, and it was just dominance. I mean, uh, I, from what I understand, Francis took him down. And just did everything that he had to do to make it work there and then. So, yeah, not not sold on PFL guys, but I'm curious as to what you think here first before I give like my method and rounds and stuff. It's tough. It's tough, but I don't think anyone Leal's fought is like Renat. Renat, other than maybe you know Ray Cooper, but I think Renat's a better wrestler. And I think we're finally going to see a fight where Carlos gets out wrestled. But why I don't have action on this, again, the fight IQ of Renat, if he comes out here and stands too long with Carlos, he's probably going to go to sleep. This is one of the more powerful guys that Renat has faced in the last couple fights. I mean, who, who has he fought? Uh, Dalby, um, Zaleski. I mean, I mean, Zaleski, I'll give some credit to. But he's got power. He went to a close decision with Dolby that, in my opinion, I thought you lost that fight. And I had money on him, and it's just, it's like having a heart attack every time you bet on Renat because he comes out 
with everything he needs to win every single fight, but he just fights to the level of his competition, I believe. Yeah. And I think if he stands too long with Carlos, he's going to sleep. I would love a double method on this, like Carlos by knockout, maybe Renat by subber. By decision. points. Yeah. yeah, and that's how I would target this fight. If I were gun to my head, I'll take Renat decision. But I think I, I would like to see the odds on Carlos finish only because he's not that bad and he hits hard and he's patient and he knows how to keep that cardio up. And, you know, I know you don't trust the PFL competition, but, you know, he has, he's coming in with a pretty good criteria and a pretty good uh, background and resume. I think he, he's getting set up here. He could win here. Renat's on upset alert this week, I think. But I'll roll with them to win a decision. If I'm going to bet, it's going to be decision only. How's Leal on the ground? He's all right. He's mainly a boxer. And from what I saw, he was he was wrestled a little bit against Ray Cooper. Ray Cooper got him down about one time. But, um, yeah, he has good takedown defense. So what, he's but just... He hasn't, yeah, they he hasn't take fought anyone. He hasn't fought anyone like... Renat, in my opinion, Renat's on a whole nother level than Ray Cooper. Well, yeah, man, when you're fighting in the PFL, you're not fighting anyone on the level of UFC fighters. Like, that's what I believe. They're not, I, I really think lowly of the PFL personally. So, brief interruption there. Um, I don't think that that many people in the PFL could, could cut it in the UFC. Um, so with that said, I like Renat here, but to your point, Renat will always fight to the level of his competition. I think that's well said. And then also, he d he doesn't seem like he cares too much about winning. Like he wants to just go out there and have fun. Like the draw that we saw. Um, where was there was another? Was it him? Who the hell was it? It was uh, Nicholas Dobby. Wasn't a great look. There was someone other than Eliza Zaleski where I'm like, man, this is rough because I thought that he was going to go out there and just dominate. And he didn't. It might have been Brian Battle. That's a good win, though, obviously, Brian Battle, because Brian Battle's on a tear lately. But, yeah, it, it must have been that Eliza Zaleski fight because I remember he was just doing so well, and then it seemed like he he wanted to just have fun and and not really care about actually putting a stamp on the performance. So, a little worried about the fight IQ, but yeah, give me uh, give me Renat by decision here. And he is in front of his people, and they want their people to win out there in the Middle East. So I think that's the safe side. Don't think too highly of PFL. Moving on up, huh? Um, are you? Do you have your uh, your screen share there? Oh, cool. Yeah, I got to click through. It's weird how we're doing this lately because, like, I have to click through two different tabs to see what you're doing. So just to break the fourth wall there a little bit. But anyway, Freed Basharat versus Victor Hugo. Interesting matchup for sure and uh, kind of a fun one. You got more of a finisher versus a, a total decision machine in Basharat. But what do you think about this matchup? Uh, I'm going to go with Freed, but... You know, hard to pick a method here other than decision. Both of these brothers are decision point fighters. And I would love to see him get a finish here. But I think Victor Hugo, with that being said, is UFC material. And I think he does keep it close. I think the line is a little bit wide. You shouldn't be laying minus 500 on anyone who's only winning decisions, in my opinion. You know, if I want to lay minus 500 on someone, I want him to go out there and get it done in round one. If you get what I'm saying. So... Uh, hard to trust the judges in the UFC. Stay away from the judges. Keep the judges out of it. And that's why I'm not betting this fight. I think I learned my lesson with Jake Hadley last week with laying minus 500s on decisionators. But I'll go for Reed to win a decision. I mean, it's probably the most popular pick this week. Am I going to be shocked at a robbery? No. You can never be shocked at the UFC when it goes to the judges. But uh, what do you think? You got any money on this? No, not right now, but um I don't I mean I I don't think Victor Hugo is that great. Um I think that out of the two brothers of the Bashra brothers, I think that Fareed is definitely the better one and that's easier said now that they're that that one has a you know, they got their donut taken away as Max Holloway says, they got that O taken away. 
I think Fareed's just always been the better one, though. And I thought that that's why I picked um, – it was actually in March, like right before my birthday, the card where Javid fought – who's the Canadian that is the brother of the coach of GSP? Zahabi. You're muted. I'm in Zahabi, yeah. Yeah, Zahabi. I actually bet on Zahabi there as a dog because I knew that that fight was going the distance, and I figured maybe he could he could steal the uh, the decision there. And that's the first time I ever f- p- placed first in a DraftKings fantasy pool. Pretty sweet. Um, and it was on my birthday, so that was or it was very near to my birthday. So I uh, really enjoyed that. But yeah, I I've never thought too highly of Javid, but Farid is very good. I think he's the better one of these two, and. I think he can pull this off, but it's got to be by decision. The guy is not dangerous. Um, neither one of these guys are. Fareed has clean boxing, but it's more of a wrestling type type game plan from these guys. So yeah, give me free decision. Uh, I'm not going to get too crazy with this one. Now, what did you say? I was looking at my phone real quick. What you got? Uh, I got to go with Fareed decision as well, but you know, up for debate. You think he's the better basher up, brother? Yeah, yeah, I think so, definitely. Okay, keep that in mind. Yeah, maybe he can get a finish here then, make me happy. Well, I wouldn't count on that because neither one of them are very big power punchers, but, you know, just Javid seems a little bit too too high on himself. Like, he he's kind of filling bigger shoes. I don't know who's the older brother there. Um, we could probably figure that out pretty quick, but, I mean, yeah, Fareed just seems more technical and he seems, seems a lot better. Um. We'll move on up here to my favorite fight of the night, other than the main event. Kennedy and Zedjaku versus Chris Barnett. And this is going to be fun. I'm going to enjoy this one. Um, You went first last time. I will gladly take this first. I love Chris Barnett. I really like this dude a lot. I don't think I can pick him here, though. So I'm probably not going to have a bet on this card because Kennedy sucks. Like, Kennedy is not good. He's 12 and 5. That's not a good record for that build that he has. He's 6'5". He's going to be almost a full foot taller than Fat Barnett. And I love Fat Barnett. I'm not talking shit about Fat Barnett. Barnett knows he's fat. He's 5'9". He he, he struggles to make 265. Okay? I I want to bet Barnett so bad here, but it's hard. It's hard to get there, right? Like I think everyone's a fan of Barnett. And Kennedy, man, Kennedy just, he seems like he should be one of these killers. And he just isn't. He lost as, I think, a minus 700 favorite to OSP in his last go around. And Barnett actually getting a lot of love. And I think that's because of the personality and just like who he is and how he fights. He's an entertaining dude. He's super athletic for how fat he is, right? Um, You know, I, I know you had some like family troubles last year. I think he lost his wife, which is horribly sad. Um, so he's been going through it lately. I hope that he can get this. And for the sake of the show, I'm going to take Barnett. Um, I am, I would not put a lot of money on Barnett though, because it's tough when you see these guys, it's going to look funny. It's going to look funny the whole time that they're in the octagon because literally in is going to be about a foot taller than him. Six, five versus five, nine, three inches. <laughs> short of a foot taller than than Barnett. So give me Barnett. Give me Barnett by knockout in round two. Okay? I'm just taking it just for fun. Don't follow that bet. Don't follow it. I'm not betting it. But I'm going to be rooting big time for Barnett. I hope that he comes out and he chugs a beer when he's walking back to the tunnel like he did last time. But what do you got? Weird fight. I'm curious to know why he pulled out a couple times. I think he pulled out of three fights in the past year or so you know pulled out against Usman Chase Sherman and well I just out- told you man his wife died and he had they he was having a real hard time so you think that's why he pulled out all these times it had to have been I'm sure like dude like for someone like him as a fellow fat guy I've been losing weight though I'm down 15 pounds um as a fellow fat guy when you get depressed you get sad you like to eat. Now me, I like drinking more. I don't, I don't even eat that much, honestly, but for someone like him, that's an athlete, he's going to fucking eat. And I'm sure that he was going through it. And I'm not even making light of the situation. I'm sure that he was going through it and 
you know, he's just fucking eating and, and chilling and relaxing and not feeling motivated to go out and exercise and do the shit, you know, maybe not feeling motivated to go spar and do what he had to do. And, um, yeah, man, I, I think that uh, that's gotta be tough for you. He seemed like he loved his wife very much, like more so than obviously husbands and wives love each other, but it seems like this hurt him big time. And, uh, they've got a kid or two, I think. And, um, yeah, I'm sure that that's why he missed so many fights recently, man. Yeah, and the fact that it's at heavyweight is strange too. You know, why is Kennedy even taking this fight? Has Kennedy even ever fought at heavyweight? Because he, no, because he sucks. He is not a good fighter at the UFC level. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'd be uh get my live bet finger ready for Chris Barnett for that round too. I do agree with you because he looked good against Jake Collier in that round too, and if you gas out against. Chris Barnett, he's going to show you that fat boy cardio. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I can't go with him there. I'm going to go with Kennedy, gets a round one KO, gets right back on track. I don't know why he's fighting at heavyweight, but, boy, I hope Chris Barnett can get on top of him, man, because that would be interesting. But I'll, I'll go with Kennedy. Boy, am I rooting for Chris Barnett, but you can't bet with your heart, guys. You can't. Yeah, that's why if I do end up getting to the window, so to speak, it's going to be very small now actually kennedy's been talking about moving up to heavyweight potentially for quite some time and um like i said he what he's doing right now is not working for him right he's not i really i i really don't think that he's very good personally um he what is he six and five in the ufc it's crazy he's had that many fights here and he's so unknown um, losing to OSP, losing to jacoby the jacoby loss is whatever but i've never thought that highly of jacoby um, you know, he went out there and it didn't Jacoby lose to uh fucking Hooper recently or no, no, that was uh Dominic Reyes is who beat him. So he's beating guys like Ion Kutalaba, Devin Clark. Devin Clark's not in the UFC anymore. Ion Kutalaba, I don't think should be in the UFC. Carl Robertson, um, you know, no, no, uh, no crazy fighters here. And obviously Carl Robertson, not in the UFC. He's doing bare knuckle these days with game bread, but yeah, man, like who's going to fucking pick against Chris Barnett with their hearts. You know, I understand if you're betting bet what you think wins, but everyone wants Chris Barnett to win. I love that dude. Um, all right, next fight. We've got, uh, what? Two more prelims after this one. So three total prelims to discuss. And then we're rolling right into the main card. Abu Smagomedov versus Bruno Ferreira. Kind of a weird fight. Kind of a hard one to pick. I got my pick locked in my head right now. But what do you think about it? It is a tough one. Been back and forth. You know, gun to my head. I, I think Abu can stay on the outside. I think Abu can use that jab. It all comes down to game plan in this fight. Whoever comes in with the best game plan and utilizes that is going to win this fight. Bruno has to close the distance, get in the clinch, maybe even mix up some wrestling. That's what he has to do, barred from a overhand right landing, you know, on a boost. But Bruno should slow down the fight, extend the fight into the second, third round, and that's not something he's used to. So I, I think one of these guys is just going to get clipped in round one. I think Abus is going to drop him with a jab. Ref's going to come in and save Bruno. So I'm going to go Abus in round one knockout. And uh, I'm very biased because I like Bruno. I've been betting Bruno almost every single fight. So, you know, it's hard for me to do that. But I, I got to go with the, the bigger guy here. Uh, so you're going with Abus what? And KO round one? Round one. Um. I like what you're saying, everything that you're saying, actually, because, yeah, what do we think about a boost? We think that he's a gas bag. He fades. But Bruno Ferreira does that a lot more, I think. So it's going to be tough to see what happens here. If this fight doesn't end in the first round, I would expect it to go the distance. And it's going to be a sloppy, weird fight. Give me Maga Madoff by fucking decision, man. I think that that makes sense because... I am I am into fading the gloves. I'm fading the knockouts with the gloves. There's more submissions and there's more knockout or more uh more submissions and more decisions. So yeah, give me give me Magomedov by decision. He has gone the distance before. The only time that uh Bruno Ferreira went out of the second round was uh once and he got a knockout in that second round, probably very early in that second round. 
uh, and that was quite some time ago, a big shot MMA. And um, I, I just don't see him really having the cardio to do that against someone like Magomedov. I think that Magomedov probably learned from his lesson with, uh, with Sean Strickland, where he went out there and just immediately gassed. I think that once you do that as a professional fighter, someone that takes your career serious, that's probably the only time that he's going to do that. So I would actually bank on the cardio of Magomedov being the better the better of the two. And um, yeah, let's go. Let's go Magomedov decision. Fuck it. A lot of decisions on this card for me. What's next? What's next? Let's pull it up here. Mitabek Orobai. Everyone loves to make fun of this dude for looking like a caveman, but no one would say that to his face. And he's taking on Matoush Roundbeski. And Roundbeski is uh, he's an interesting guy. I, I actually really liked him a lot when he first came in. But Orobai is nuts, man. He's he's very, very skilled all over. Very, very good ground fighter. I'm curious what you think about this one. Finally, we probably got a guy Rebecca can't wrestle. And uh, Rebecca doesn't look all that great on the feet. You know, he can get out worked. He can get out volumed. And I think that's what we're going to see here. I think we're going to see Rebecca get beat up for three rounds for once. And, you know, is that what happened to him in his last fight? No, he got finished. But I, I think Oral Bai is going to work him for three rounds, keep it standing. I might even finish him. You know, I'm going to go with a decision here for Oral Bai. But I really can't see a path to victory for Rebecca at all unless he can get him down, and I don't think he can do it. So you're going oral by do you have a you have a method I didn't catch? Decision. Decision, huh? Yeah, it's tough to it's tough to go with one or the other as far as methods go. Um I, I'm definitely high on oral by. I think he's fucking good, man. I think he's really good. But the thing is, with Roundbeski, you know, he's only lost by knockout. They usually come later, round two and three, or when his knockouts have happened, from my research here. Um, I could see a knockout. I could see a round three knockout for Orbi, like a little ground and pound going on. Um, fuck it, give me that. Give me that round three knockout, just because I think that Orbi's cardio is solid. Um Round Besky's is a little bit sloppy and he does fade fairly quickly because he gives it his all and he's not going to be able to do that for 15 minutes with the caveman here. So yeah, give me oral by KO round three. I'm going to lock it in. KO three. Uh, next up, Jeff Neal versus RDA. Rafael Dos Anjos. Fun fight, man. I love Jeff Neal. Big fan of him. Um, dude doesn't have the best record though. And, and it's interesting because he's such a good fighter, but he fights very rarely. I know he had, uh, he had a sepsis scare, which is a very serious thing. Sepsis is fucking dangerous. It kills all kinds of fucking people. And you always wonder, and you know, I'm going to bring this up in the co-main event. You wonder how people recover or fighters recover. I should say after having these health scares. I mean, it seems like Hamzat has AIDS like that dude. When he gets sick, he gets sick. And, and, you know, he was talking about an embedded or maybe it was the uh, the countdown where like everyone ate the same food and he was the only one that got sick. And it's like, yeah, that's AIDS, you know, but obviously he wouldn't be able to fight in the UFC if he had AIDS. Um, Jeff Neal, similar story, man. Like he he's not one of these kind of, you know, complainers. Seems like Hamza kind of complains a little bit about his uh, his health. Jeff Neal just kind of like looked at it and 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 faced it. He beat sepsis, which is, again, fucking life-threatening. If you get that shit, it's damn near a death sentence. And and uh, the reason I like him so much was the first time I ever bet a full-card parlay, uh, main-card parlay, that was all that I was doing. I, you know, when I first got into MMA betting, I was like, well, I don't want to throw down too much money. Let me just throw down five bucks, and and I'll, I'll parlay all the, the main-card fighters together. And he was on there with uh, a few other fighters that suck. And then also Jamal Hill, who's looking a little crazy lately. So I'm wondering if I need to get off the Jeff Neal train as uh, as a fan. I have one of his cards. Um, RDA is just tough, dude. RDA is real tough. He's a wrestler. Yeah, he's old. He's 40 versus the 34-year-old Jeff Neal, who's also a busboy at Outback Steakhouse. Very interesting. But... Dude, I got to go Jeff Neal here, man. I have to. I, I can't get off of him yet. 
think RDA is a little bit, a little bit beat up. And I think that, you know, he's going to go in here. He's going to try and wrestle, but M you know, MMA math doesn't always work. But if you look at what Jeff Neal did to Luke a, and then what Luke a did to RDA, I think that that's why a lot of people would be on the Jeff Neal side. It's not that simple, but Jeff Neal beat the fuck out of Luke a, and then Luke a dominated RDA. So I think it's a levels thing here. RDA definitely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame when he retires. And I think that should be soon, to be honest. So yeah, give me Jeff Neal. Fuck. I mean, I think I think that he could knock out RDA. Um I'm just trying to think what round. He's not going to submit him. He's going to try and stay away from the uh from the grappling. But he could catch RDA, and I'm thinking that could come in round two. So give me a knockout round two for uh, Jeff Neal. I like that pick. I like that. It's just it's tough going against my brother in Christ in RDA. It is hard. I want to back him here. It's just. Jeff Neal got baptized too. Whatever. He was talking about it like all crazy. When? His last fight? No, on his Instagram. Let me double check that. Let me fact check myself. I'm pretty sure he went out there and he had all kinds of pictures of him getting baptized. And it was like, yeah, yeah, there's all kinds of pictures of him on here. Um, and yeah, he's a, he's a big, yeah, he says August 28th was my birthday, but September 1st is my rebirth day. After my near death experience with sepsis, I went down a dark path, depression, anxiety, addiction, the list goes on. Tried self-medication to figure things out myself, but all that did was pull me deeper in the hole. Some may not believe in God, but trust me, God is real. I've met the devil. Hands of steel back this time as God is with me. So, yeah, let's go. Well, you know what happens when, you know, these two Christians fight each other, you know? It makes me think of uh, Dan Ige and Bryce Mitchell. They're going to have a three-round battle, and we're going to have a clear winner. It's probably going to be Jeff Neal because I don't see RDA getting the takedowns. That's it. I, th I could see him getting a couple. He's going to have to take the path of victory that, you know, Neil Magny did, and he's not Neil Magny, you know. This is gatekeeper versus gatekeeper, and Jeff Neal is the true gatekeeper here. Um, I think RDA is more of like a top 15, top 10 gatekeeper, and Jeff Neal is definitely hands down a top five. So I, I agree with you. This is a levels thing. Jeff Neal is just up a level, but the reason why I think this fight's going to be a little bit closer than people think is the motivation of Neal, you know? The title is almost out of sight for both of these guys, and with that being said, they're going to come into a career, especially when they're Christian, they're a little bit less violent, they have less killer instinct, and they're more about the show money. So I'm going to be leaning the over here, like the over one and a half. Round three start, something like that. And I'm just going to bet on the durability of RDA. And basically it's just a Neil KO fade. But yeah, I think Neil is going to get enough done on the feet at distance, mitigate the takedowns, and he's going to win a clear unanimous decision. Mitigate, huh? That's a big word. I like that. Yeah, dude, I... Uh... It's hard. It's hard to side with RDA here, but he's he is very good. I mean, he's a very very good fighter. It's just, you know, who are the people that he's beating lately? Let's look here. Um, who he is actually defeating lately? I am got, got Gamrot, Luke. He lost to. He beat Barbarina, and he beat Moicano. Come on, you got to give Moicano. That's a good look, but that's that yeah, Moicano spot. wasn't. That's a different Moicano, even though that was only in 2022. Moicano right now is is streaking. Like, he he is not the same as he was. A lot of people thought that Moicano sucked. And, like, I always, I always liked Moicano, and I thought that, you know, I picked him against, uh, I picked him against fucking the tall dude, the tarantula. And I don't know. I, the, the, Moicano is different now than he was back then. It's kind of like a Charles Oliveira story with, like, a, a shorter amount of time. So... Yeah, man, RDA is not beating anybody crazy. So yeah, give me, uh, give me Neil. I'm very confident in that. But I'm hoping that he doesn't go out there and try to do the point fighting thing just because they're fucking Christians, man. Who cares? Christians knock out Christians all the fucking time. Um, main card that was the featured prelim. So yeah, let's roll into the main card here. And this is a cool fight, man. I I think that this is actually really interesting. Shara Magomedov 
versus Armin Petrosian. And these are two kickboxers. They're both going to get the fight that they want, but is Petrosian going to shoot any takedowns just to mix it up? I think he's the better, more well-rounded mixed martial artist. So give me your thoughts on this one. Actually going to disagree with you. I think the better mixed martial artist is actually Shara. I think Armin's only better in the kickboxing. I think it's a kickboxing fight, and Armin is the better kickboxer. He hits harder. He's more technical. But as far as from a BJJ and mixing it up perspective, I think Shara is going to be the one who's going to have to do that in order to win. I think he's going to be the one who's going to have to initiate the clinch. I think he's going to be the one that's going to have to dig deep. I think early, this is all Armin. Armin round one should be up going into round two. Just, you know, show and share of that jab. But you have to keep in mind where this fight is located. It's in Abu Dhabi. Anything close is going to be given to Shara. A hundred percent. Just, you got to think the bias here is on another level compared to, you know, when we're fighting in France, when we're, when we got a fight card in Britain. We're in Abu Dhabi. It's going to the Muslim. Share a bullet by decision. It's probably going to be a split. That's how I'm going to take it. I think every round is going to be close. I think Armin could look like he won every round and then lose a decision. But this is a political pick right here. Share is going to win this fight, in my opinion. But if this was anywhere else, if this was in Vegas, Armin would not be plus 155. This would be an even Steven fight, and you would have to take Armin here, in my opinion. But, uh... Based on the politics, he's got to go Shara. I hate the line. He should be an underdog here when he's ma matched up against a guy who should, you know, clean him up on the feet. Yeah, it's so hard, man, because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that talk about betting and, and all this stuff, and they're going to say, uh, you know, similar things to what you said there with the, the, pol the from the political side, right? If anything's close, it's going to Shara. I would agree, but... If everyone starts thinking that you wonder if there's some some uh you know potential action that you should be placing on Petrosian because like just to get away from that hive mind thinking, it's tough though, man. Shara, I don't think is very good. Like, I don't think that he's as good as they said he was. Let me say it like that. Armin, another guy that they said was really good, and he's not. You hear a name like Armin Petrosian, and you think that this dude's gonna be a beast. Um, and I, I honestly think that a lot of people confuse him with Armin Sarukian too, but Armin Petrosian kind of not very good at all. Um, he's got the good striking. Like you said, he's got a great jab. Shara is, is not very clean. He, he, what really turned me off of him. I thought he was great up until he fought, uh, Mackenzie Dern's boyfriend or husband or whatever. And that dude was dead tired. He flew across the world on short notice and made it look competitive until he got knocked out in the third round. Like Charlotte was supposed and to. He knock didn't him even out put him one. out by knocking him out. He put him out just by cardio. exhausting him. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So it's tough to pick Shara here. I think that Shara is better at beating up people on the street that aren't expecting them to aren't expecting a fight. And, you know, like the, this dude's fucking beat up strangers and shit like that. I think he's better at doing that than actually fighting at the at a high level in the UFC. And this guy can only fight in Abu Dhabi in the Middle East because he's got one eye. He can't fight in the U.S. So, man, it's so hard not to pick Armin here. If these lines get really wide, I might sprinkle a little bit on Armin. But right now, I mean, what I'm seeing here is plus 155 for Petrosian. I got to go Shara. I, I, I have to agree with Alex that... Anything close is going to Magomedov. And even maybe if it's not that close, it's going to Magomedov. So. And I'll, I'll also mention, I believe Shara has got more dog in him. I believe that he could be getting beat up for two rounds. That's probably true. And he'll still be moving forward. This guy has no give up in him. I believe he has more dog in him than Armin. And I believe the technical capabilities of Armin are just going to Go down the drain as the fight goes on because Cher is going to get it out of him. And you got to think that crowd, Cher is going to have the momentum. Everything is in Cher's corner except for the technical abilities. But I think that's going to go away after round one. So I'm going to have my live bet ready as well. I, I think Cher is not going to be doing good early. I think he might even get knocked down a couple times. But that dog in him is going to lift him up. And I think he's a great comeback fighter. And I, I think he shows that here. Yeah, and it sounds like you're saying that you you don't believe in Armin's cardio, which I don't either. Exactly. So, yeah, the quit, the cardio, 
the flying overseas, fighting in enemy territory, all that stuff's working against the Armenian here. So yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go, Shara. Um, you took him by. Let me just double check here. You got him by decision. I've got Shara by decision as well. What do you think about a K, uh, KO in round three, though? I sure. wouldn't mind that. It's just, you know, unless he's dead tired like Mackenzie Dern's boyfriend, I don't see it. I, I think we're going to have to see a decision here. Maybe a submission. I know they underrate Shara's BJJ game. It's not you know, good. He hurts him, and he, he dives into a guillotine or something. I know Shara is not shy to, you know, go for those subs. So that's just a flyer. If I'm going to take Shara by... You know, anything, it's probably going to be Sharon over one and a half. That's another lane I would like. Okay. Well, I like it. Well, let's move on to this uh, second fight on the main of uh, main card here. We've got Magomed Ankalaev versus Alexander Rakic. And that's going to be interesting. Um, I see. I see Shara. Okay. You got it. We got it. We're working through it. Don't even worry about it. Magomedov versus, or I'm sorry, Magomed Ankalaev versus Alexander Rakic. It's interesting here, dude, because Alexander Rakic looked pretty good against Yuri, was beating the fuck out of him until he got knocked out. That says two things. It says that Yuri is very tough, but not skilled. <laughs> and I would, I would definitely stick by that. He's not a skilled fighter. He's just very tough and wild. Magomed, I think, is fucking retarded. I'm just going to say it. He is so dumb the way that he goes about fighting. Very boring. No one likes this guy from a fan perspective. I understand if you're betting on the guy, it's cool. Everyone that says that this is the best light heavyweight in the world is also retarded. He's not. Alex Pereira would fucking murder this dude. So if you go out there and you're Uncle Live and you go and you fight... um you know, Jan Blahovic to a, a draw. And then you get a no, a no contest with Johnny Walker. And then you go out there and you finally beat him. It took you two tries to beat Johnny Walker. Who's getting knocked out by everybody these days. Uncle Live is far from the best. I think that he's actually very overrated, but people don't like him because of that, that dumb style. People either love him or they hate him. They think of him as like one of these Dagestanis, right? And he, I think he he is from Dagestan. Alexander Rakic, two fight losing streak, hasn't won a fight since uh I mean almost four fucking years ago. This dude hasn't won. Now he's fought Jan Blahowitz and he's fought Yuri Prohaska. But as much as I talk shit about Ankalaev, I think that Magomed Ankalaev beats both of those guys if they fight. I think that uh Ankalaev probably won the fight with with Jan but he didn't on paper right he didn't he he didn't win it so if you if your eyes watched it your eyes probably told you that Uncle I have won but that's not what the judges saw it's tough to pick this one I want to pick Rakic but I think Uncle I have wins I can't stand Uncle I have um but I think that he wins it's probably by decision I think Rakic probably beats the fuck out of him in round one and then Uncle I have comes back and wins round two and three so give me uh Uncle I have by decision what you got? Oh, finally you pick Ankalaev. I'm the guy. I'm the other guy you were talking about. I'm the guy that loves Ankalaev. Every time I bet on this man, he shows up, does his job. That That's why I said from a time, fan perspective. Whatever. The one time he didn't win me money was the time they robbed him from getting the belt. That was an absolute robbery. I was waving my bet slips like that was easy money, and I couldn't believe what I heard from the judges. This was man bad. was robbed of being the best in the world, okay? They have robbed him of plenty of title shots, and I'm telling you, this is probably the one of the only people in the division who could probably beat Perea right now, and that's why they're not matching him up with him right now. They're giving him Alexander Ratchik, who's coming off a two K TKO losses. This is embarrassing. This man does not to be deserving to fight Ankalaev right now. Ankalaev is going to run through Alexander Rad Radchik. Knockout. I think I'm going to give him some credit. I'm going to say round two, even though we didn't get Johnny Walker done in round one like I liked. I would have liked him to. I think uh, the line is 
spot on. Minus 400, that's where it should be. This man's going to beat him 75% of the time. I think he's going to get a finish here. Round two, let's go. So what are you seeing from Ankalaev that that makes you say that he's better than Alex Pereira? Because let me just run through his, his last five fights. No, I'm not saying he's better. I, I never said that. I'm you saying he that he, he's the most live on the roster. He's one of the worst matchups for Perea, and we both know that. He can mix it up. He can wrestle. The only blemish on his career is a Paul Craig fluke, you know? That's the only blemish on his career, and plenty of people have fell fl- to a Paul Craig fluke. So you can't really knock that too much. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's crazy that Paul Craig is the one guy to beat this dude. Um, Because, yeah, Paul Craig, that's the only way that he wins. He beat Jamal Hill, too. But, I mean, look at Tiago Santos. Anthony Smith is who he beat. And Anthony Smith went into that fight hurt. Jan Blahowitz, fucking Johnny Walker, no contest. Johnny Walker again. I don't get why everyone thinks. I mean, on Tapology, he's ranked the number one light heavyweight in the world, and that's fucking insane to me. I mean, it really is insane. This dude is not the best light heavyweight in the world. And as long as Alex Pereira's in there, and I'm not even a Pereira fan necessarily. I like the dude. I don't don't dislike him. But I'm not one of these fanboys that fucking says Chama all the time in my personal life and shit. Yeah, but there's a reason. There's a reason why this matchup hasn't happened. Maybe he's busy. You know, maybe the, the timing just doesn't work out. But you got to know, I promise you this, if they get matched up or when they get matched up, it will be a closer line than Khalil versus Perea. Sure. The odds makers will 100% give him more of a chance to win. 100%. Yeah, Khalil was a pretty big dog. I guarantee you it'll be, it'll be more likely a pick for Ankoliev. It'll be lower for Ankoliev. Yeah, I mean, An- Ankoliev will probably be the favorite because so many people no, believe no. that. Dude, so many people, like, if you listen to MMA media, man, all these fucking talking heads that know nothing about fighting, they just say, Magomed Ankalaev is the best light heavyweight in the world. You can't convince me otherwise. And so people that listen to that also bet, I'm and they're going to go in, and they're going to pick fucking Ankalaev. I'm saying that. MMA fighting, Ariel Hawani, all the, like, the biggest fucking MMA journalists out there. So, yeah, I, I, I think that a lot of people will. I think a lot of people like Ankalaev from a betting perspective, but from the fan perspective, it's hard to like to do. He looks I'll fucking he weird. He knocks out Johnny Walker. Everyone loves everybody who knocks out Johnny Walker. Yeah, but that, that's your favorite thing to bet. That's everyone's favorite thing to bet is when Johnny Walker's fighting, just bet that he gets knocked out because that dude gets knocked out, and it's usually a comical knockout, too. It's kind of sad. Um, all right, let's move to the, the next fight of the night and we've got a nice matchup here we've got the featured fight of the evening Lerone Murphy versus Dan Ige tough fight to call um I forget who went first last time I'll go first right now Lerone Murphy Dan Ige Dan Ige you gotta love this guy similar to uh you know Chris Barnett how do you fucking hate Dan Ige after what he did in his last fight, stepping up on three hours notice when he's getting a massage, all this stuff. You've heard it everywhere else. Lerone Murphy's the better fighter. Lerone Murphy is the far better fighter. This guy got shot in the head. You can't knock this dude out. Danny Ige's pretty hard to knock out, too. Give me Lerone Mur- Murphy by unanimous decision. 30-27. I think that he outclasses Danny Ige here. Um, yeah, give me, give me Murphy decision. What do you got? I'm with you 100%. I'm with you except for the different method, you know, I, I really do believe that Lerone Murphy can be the first one to finish Danny Gay. I actually think Danny Gay could even finish Murphy. They both have their chin up in the air and they both can get clipped. And I think we're going to see a dog fight here. I think they're that when you're matched up against Danny Gay, you got to bring the fight. And after I hate to use the MMA math here, but you know, Look at what he did to Edson Barbosa, and look what Edson Barbosa did to Danny Gay. Now, I believe that Danny Gay has come leaps and bounds since then, but I think there's going to come to a point where it, the fight's going to get stopped. And hear me out. Danny Gay's publicity has went through the roof. And when you have 
a lot of the fan base, I feel like they throw in a ref to try to protect you a little bit more. They won't let you take as much damage as some other guys. And I feel like Danny Gay just landed himself on that list where he's going to be a little bit more protected so that they can continue to get, have him have more fights. Do you get what I'm saying here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I really feel like he's a protected interest now in the UFC. The fans love him. So I, I don't think he's going to be able to survive a dog fight, especially without having the refs give him leniency or even the cutmen give him leniency. So I'm going to go with a Ron Murphy round two TKO. Dr. Stoppage. Dr. Stoppage, a little TKO action there. I like that. Um. All right, let's move to the co-main, man. We've got uh, a nice one. I'm very excited for this, should the fight happen. Robert Whitaker, the Reaper, versus Hamzat Chemaev. I'll tell you right now, everyone's going to say the same thing, man, and I'll let you make your picks first, but it's Hamzat early, it's Robert Whitaker late. What do you think about the matchup? <sighs> I'm a little bit biased here, you know, after hearing all the bad publicity with Chemaev, in the cryptocurrency and everything, it's hard to back him. And it's especially hard to back him after, you know, he's retiring all the time, coming back. He has all these fights canceled. He's probably had about 10 surgeries, God only knows. But I'd like to go with the resurgent Bobby Whitaker. I think Bobby Whitaker is going to, barring a robbery decision, which is really, you know, Bobby is the king of getting robbed by decision. He Anything close, he loses, except again, unless it's against Yoel Romero. Then he gets it. So There's no I, fucking way that Chamaya fights 25 minutes, dude. And I agree with you. I think it could happen, but I think Bobby Knuckles has every which way to win this fight by submission. I think he late he can even get some takedowns and win in the wrestling. I think it, it, all Bobby has to do is extend this fight, run around on the feet for a few rounds, circle him for a two rounds. Don't get taken down for two rounds. Mitigate all the damage in the clinch, and I think he's smooth sailing. This is all him in the bag. But you're right. I haven't been listening to anybody, but I guarantee you if Comzak gets any takedowns within the first two rounds, it's gonna be it's going to be tough, and we could even see Robert gas out. We've seen Robert get tired before. Watch the DDD, DDP fight. So it's hard. And I, this is a toss-up fight, but I, I like the value on my boy Bobby Knuckles. I think I think Abu Dhabi will be happy enough as long as Shara wins, but I, I think Kamzat's the sacrificial lamb here for the card. Yeah. Uh, what me- What round did you say? I'm going to go decision here. I actually think Chemayev's going to... Because let me give you an example. If Chemayev just gets stonewalled in the wrestling, he doesn't get any takedowns. He's going to really get takedowns. See, he's still going to move forward. And all we're going to see is Robert Whitaker utilize his footwork for five, four rounds. And I think Kamzak can keep the cardio up as long as he's not getting takedowns and wasting them. We know how these wrestlers get tired. They get a takedown... And they, their opponent gets up right away. And then they waste energy getting another takedown. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that Whitaker will get takedown. Or I'm sorry, that Chemayev will get takedowns. And and don't be surprised if Whitaker gets a takedown too, especially if we get to round two, three. Um, I got this thing, man, where, you know, how everyone was making Chemayev seem like a superhero, right? When he was fighting, he was very active, all this stuff. All of the footage of him training to me, it seems like, you know, there was this footage that came out of him wrestling a gold medalist uh, wrestler, uh, Olympic gold medalist. I wouldn't be surprised, dude, if they're like, hey, make this like, let's let's just pretend that Hamzat is beating the fuck out of you while we're wrestling. And the wrestler's like, cool, yeah, let's do that. Because Hamzat's connected with the fucking warlord over there in Chechnya. They want this whole MMA out of that region to look incredibly strong. I, I I don't believe in the immune system of Chemayev, and I don't believe in like the fucking physical strength in him anymore. I understand that he's very physically strong initially, and he's he's fast and he's he's explosive. But after a certain amount of time, that is going to die down, and I think that this good dude's cardio will never be elite. 
He will never have elite cardio. Robert Whitaker can have elite cardio, and he has before in the past. So, I mean, it's hard to pick Whitaker because of the the, the narrative of Chemayev, but I got to pick Whitaker here because he's going to be able to, A, if he, if he can stuff some takedowns, if he can defend some submissions, which he can. We know that he can do that. How many times has this dude been submitted? Robert Whitaker. He's been submitted once in his life. And I don't know who that was by. I'm going to try and find it. If you find it first, let me know. Um, A triangle choke by Hoon Kim in Legend FC. And that was in 2011. I don't know who the fuck Hoon Kim is. No one does. But this guy triangle choked Robert Whitaker, and then he figured out, hey, I need to work jujitsu more. And he got with uh, Malcoon and all these other guys, and he's learned. I mean, the, the, the dude is very, very hard to submit, clearly. He hasn't been submitted in his UFC career. Hamsat's not the first one to do that. He's not going to knock out Whitaker, right? It's going to be it's going to be kind of a sweat in the first 10 minutes, especially, especially that first two minutes. But I think if we if we get out of round two, man, it's all Whitaker all day. So give me Robert Whitaker. Give me Robert Whitaker by knockout in round four. Okay? Let's fucking go. Reaper, make me the money back that I lost against your uh, fucking other Arab dude that you beat. Uh, let me write this down real quick. Reaper, KO, four. Now, the main event, man, I'm excited for this. Um, I've got a lot of decisions on the card, and I'll tell you right now, this isn't one of them. I'm not picking the decision right here. Ilya Taporia versus Max Holloway. Let me just tell you right now, everyone is fucking picking Max Holloway because they saw the knockout of Justin Gaethje. It was a viral moment, as viral as fighting moments can possibly get. One second left, Max Holloway fucking knocks out a dude 10 pounds heavier than him. Let me tell you something. Max Holloway's rightful class is 155. He should have fucking moved up a while ago, and he showed that there. He would probably be very, very close to a title shot, if not getting a title shot, if he was at 155. At 144, he drains himself too much. He's too small. Uh, or I'm sorry, he's he, he is too small at 145. His rifle, his rifle weight class is 155. Ilya Teporia is a fucking beast. This dude is very good at wrestling. Very good at boxing. He's got a chin on him. I know he's been dropped before by some less than optimal competition, but he didn't get knocked out. I'm not, I'm not going to like beat around the bush too much here. I think Ilya Taporia is the first dude to ever knock out Max Holloway, especially after Max Holloway jumped up in weight, felt comfortable there, looked better than he ever has. Ever has. That was an incredible performance. Looked better than he ever has, and now he's going to go back down 10 pounds. He's going to dehydrate himself more than he has to because he should be at 155. And Ilya is going to knock him the fuck out. And I love Max Holloway. Who doesn't? But Ilya is uh, is this new generation. And I wouldn't be surprised if this dude, Ilya, does retire undefeated. Uh, maybe at 30 fights, maybe, maybe 20. I mean, this dude doesn't have to go much longer before he has generational wealth at this point. And he lives in Spain, so it's not as expensive as it here is in the fucking corrupt United States. Give me Ilya Taporia, knockout round. I'm gonna say three. I think that that Holloway pushes back a little bit for the first two rounds. Taporia takes over and gets a middle or to late knockout in round three. Uh, I gotta disagree with you, but I, I have to agree with your no distance call out. You know, I, I do like the over two and a half here. It's gonna be a play for me. You know, it's hard to go against both of these guys' durability, but. I do agree. I think they both can get clipped. I, I believe Ilya has been hit many times. You can see him get dropped in about three of his fights, usually by head kicks. And that's something that I believe Max can implement to win this fight. Head kicks. Kicks in general. And he's not usually doing that, but I believe in the last fight, we saw him throw a good amount of head kicks to Justin Gaethje, and he kind of upped the ante with the kick. So I think if he continues that, I think he can easily win a decision against Ilya Tapuria. I believe he can catch him just like um, Jai Herbert caught him. Yeah, Jai Herbert, that's a tough look, right? Like, come on. And he's fighting a similar guy, a guy who's taller than him now. He's not fighting short Volkanovsky. 
who's coming off of a knock a knockout himself. The difference is is that he had Volkanovski at his worst, at his lowest, right after a knockout. He's not now he's getting Max Holloway at his absolute best in my opinion. Max Holloway hasn't looked better. Anything close is going to Max Holloway. The UFC in my opinion wants Max Holloway to win. I think Max Holloway is the next golden star of the UFC. This, to him, is like the rematch for McGregor, in my opinion. He's getting the same matchup. And that's how he's probably going to lose if he does, is by sub. Um, but I, I don't think he's he's going to lose, guys. I think he's going to outpoint Ilya. I think he's going to maybe even drop him a couple times. I think even Max could get dropped himself. I think he's going to be one of the fight of the year candidates. I'm going to go Max Holloway wins a split decision to become champion once again. And uh, I think he it's his next step into super stardom. I think he's just been around it so long that anything close to give him even more glory and boost him up even more, it's going to be it's going to be done. I thought and, you said uh, you agreed with me on the no decision. I do, but it's not something I'm going to bet, but my gut's telling me it's going to go to a decision. Okay. It's just my gut. Interesting. And I'm curious to see the odds, you know. Maybe I'll be betting the other way than that. But as far as just a money line straight pick, I'm going to be going with the Bless Express and the Momentum. I think the line should be closer. I think there should be an even odds fight. You're giving me two to one on a guy who's the one of the greatest of all times. The height of his career in his prime, hard to say no. He is in his prime at 32. A lot of people think that Max Holloway is much older than that because he started in the UFC very, very young. Uh, but, yeah, this dude is a Hall of Famer without a doubt. And uh, if Ilya Taporia can, can add that notch to his belt, that's going to be impressive. Do you know the only person out of Max Holloway's, what are we talking here, 26 plus 7, what's that, 32? 33, whatever, 30 plus fights. You know, the, the only guy to ever finish him. Don't look, don't either, look. It's either Dustin Poirier or Connor. It's Dustin Poirier, dude. My favorite fighter. Yeah. Uh, only guy to ever, ever finish him. And the only guy to ever knock or uh, finish Connor twice. So yeah, it was pretty, pretty sweet to see that stat. I, 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 it's just, it's an interesting matchup, man. It really is. Taporia, I tend to believe what he says when he starts talking about, like, I'm going to knock this guy out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He said that about Volk. Um, I agree with you. Volk was definitely beaten down when he faced him. And I mean, you know, someone like Volk, it seemed like he was going through like mental health fucking shit too, which I thought was kind of stupid because, you know, you're one of these guys that's out there making millions and millions of dollars, having a fun life and doing everything that you want to do. And you're going to talk about mental health. I get it. It affects people. But talk to somebody, you know, working in a fucking like a blue collar job that's not making much money and they're struggling like their their life strugglers are 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 far more real than yours when you're you're making all this money and you got your name on posters you just what he was he's addicted to the feeling of fighting and that's what it is and that's fine just admit that don't fucking say that you you know i kind of lost a little respect for volk after that but i still like the guy um this is an interesting matchup man taporia holloway i'm on taporia you're on holloway i think a lot of people are going to be on holloway though so and it, and that's the thing if you start seeing a lot of people taking holloway and that line doesn't move that's something that you got to be conscious of as a better line's out moving there. in the opposite direction. Honestly, I lo I know a lot of people who are taking Tapuria, and I know they're taking him heavy. I know my boy Harry's on Tapuria. He's max betting him. The guys who are betting Tapuria are betting heavy money on them. They are confident. Yeah. Well, that's also scary, right? I mean, um, all right. Harry I feel like this is a definitely one of those pay per view cards where I think the casuals go home happy and not crying. Sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we always talk about, you know, Harry's very sharp, but he's not he's not batting at a thousand percent. He's 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 lost bets before. And so whenever you talk about, you know, people being super confident in anything, um, it, it does get a little bit scary. So, yeah, man, I think uh, I think that this is a very polarizing fight.
and you're a hundred percent in on whichever fighter you are siding with. So it'll be interesting. I hope it's just a very entertaining fight. I'm probably not going to put a ton of money on this. I hope I can make some money throughout the rest of the card so I can just enjoy this and maybe put 10 bucks on something crazy happening and, um, and, and, and hopefully cashing that. But I, this is one that you can just enjoy. So with that said, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to share before we get out of here. We'll plug ourselves and stuff, but anything else? Yeah, right now I'm going to give you guys some picks that I currently have. If you want my late notice picks, just hit me up on my link tree, DM me, or sign up to the premium service. Other than that, this is what I got for you right now. I got the over 2.5 in Tapuria Holloway at minus 200. I'm going to parlay that with Ant Kaliev money line. So still a little bit juicy, but I like that. And... I'm also going to be taking my boy Max Holloway, money line plus 200. I love that. If it gets better, let's go. But I really see that coming down. I think the public is going to start hammering Holloway later on in the week. I do agree with you. More people are going to be on a Holloway, especially at plus 200. And mm -hmm. uh, that line's going to come down. So if you can get Holloway at plus 200 or better, that's a green light. Hell yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything too official here for you. Just looking through this, like my confident picks are Renat, uh, Basharat, um, Oral by Neil, Shara, um, Ankalaev, even though I'm, you know, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I love Murphy. Um, and that's it. I, you know, I, I'm picking Taporia, but I'm not super, super confident on that. So yeah, Murphy. Ankalaev, Shara, Neil, Orobai, Basharat, Fakratadinov. Those are the ones that I'm most confident on. Maybe you could parlay those up, round robin, whatever you want to do. They're all favorites, but um, yeah, those are my confident picks for this COD. Anything and I else? I want to shout out, I want to shout out Rob Font. He did he he man of his word. He, he looked me, good. He made me some money last week. I was happy. He just threw a little bit of money on him, and you know what? He showed up. Dude, how many big uh, dogs cash last week? Good amount. Yeah, three. Shout out to, yeah, three shout massive out to dogs. Kata. Shout out to Calvin Cada in Combat Zone. We got our boy Jared. He'll be fighting November 9th in Manchester, New Hampshire, at the Snoo Arena. Get your tickets now. He's getting it done. Yeah, very confident on him. I wish that we could bet him. I'd put a lot on uh, on our boy Jared. And he'll be back to the show after that fight. He just kind of wanted to zero in and make sure that he was focusing on on only the fights that he needed to focus on, which is one fight and not this bullshit that we do here. So support him. I'll put the uh I'll put the link to purchase the pay-per-view. If anyone's interested in doing that, you can enter his last name, L-E-N-N-O-N. And he'll get credited with that. Uh, I think they throw him back a couple bucks for each person that buys the pay-per-view with that code. You can watch all these shows on the Profit Picks in, uh, YouTube, not Instagram, the Profit Picks YouTube. And you know where to follow me and to check all my shit out if you're into conspiracy Ryan, let them know what time, the, what time does the card start. Which one? This weekend. Oh, this one starts at 10 a.m. Eastern, and it's 7 a.m. Eastern PT. I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Holy shit. Restart. 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. Um, it's the the time zone stuff's confusing for me, man, because I live in Arizona and we don't do daylight savings. So half the year I'm on mountain, half the year I'm on Pacific. So anytime anyone asks me to do daylight savings or any fucking time shit. I get all fucked up. But yes, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. And that's uh that's a wake and bake. That's a I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna get drunk early that day. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. Yeah, you guys are gonna have to set up an alarm. Maybe I'll be up all night, you know. That seems like an all-nighter for the boys. No, nah, man. I, I gotta I gotta fucking definitely get some sleep and then I'll wake up and I mean the event's gonna be over for me at like two, two in the afternoon, two p.m. You know, it's going to be very, very quick. And uh, I would prefer something like this over a very late start time. Personally, I kind of like these earlier start times. Not not seven. If we could start at like 10, that'd be cool. Um, But whatever. It is what it is. 
Thanks, Alex, for your time, man. Um, anything else before we get out? Last Let's words. Make that bag. Let's make that bag, baby. I know you're against me on Holloway, but I think I think he's got it. Yeah, I'm not gonna have too much action on that fight because I want to enjoy it. I think it's gonna be a fight for the ages. And uh Nikolai is coming through for us again. Don't be yeah, I'm hoping that we can make some money throughout the card up until that point, and then I'll be good. Just no matter who wins, I just want to see a good fight for that main event. I'd love to see Whitaker win, though. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, let's go, guys. Good luck if you're betting. And um, you can tune in next week. We'll be here again. And everybody take care.